Hello and welcome to Open Line. I'm Starlene Stringer. Temperatures are getting higher and those warmer conditions bring some health and safety concerns. Whether you're doing yard work or just enjoying some fun in the sun, viewers were invited to submit questions through email and social media and we're going to get those answered throughout the show. Our special guests are Dr. Renika Thompson, the Clinical Medical Director at Irving Community Clinic and City of Irving Mosquito Control Coordinator Tom Dickens. Thank you both for being here. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Well, it's a pleasure to have you and there's a lot to talk about. As you all know, temperatures have already hit the 90s early this year. So let's ask about the risk of heat stroke and how it usually happens. Doctor, can you tell us about that? Yes, um, I guess firstly, I would like to try to explain what heat stroke is. Please. Maybe that would help. Uh -huh. um, essentially, what heat stroke is, is where your core body temperature has gotten higher than 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And so you'll start to display symptoms. Sometimes those symptoms are dizziness, um, you'll feel weak, you'll feel tired, people will um, pass out, okay? Wow. And so um, it's very important that you try to stay hydrated, consume lots of water, um, especially if you're doing activities outside. So for athletes, football players, construction workers, all those people who spend a lot of time outside, okay. you need to stay adequately hydrated because if you don't and, you, and your core temperature gets that high, it can become life-threatening. Wow, that's, that's frightening. Now you talk about your core body temperature reaching 104, but does it have to be a certain temperature outside um, or can it just start to make your temperature rise no matter how warm it is? Well, it tends to occur with extreme heat changes. Okay. So, you know, when the temperature starts to get higher than 90 degrees, mm -hmm. then we start to get more concerned about that and we'll see more reports of people having heat stroke type events. I see, and you mentioned some of the symptoms. Are they the same for adults and children? Similar, yes, they are similar, and 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 sometimes the the symptoms aren't always as consistent. Okay. And so it won't. They won't always have dizziness. Sometimes it'll just be weakness. Sometimes they'll just feel like they're going to pass out. Um, sometimes they just feel very hot. You know, mm. so it's not it's not always clear, but you should try to be cognizant of the symptoms when they're there. And you talk about staying hydrated. Is that the best way to treat it? What are some other ways to treat it? Well, if it if it happens, you need to call 911 okay. and that should be the first thing um, to get EMS there as fast as possible and then you need to start to cool the person off so get them, getting them in the shade, um, putting cold cloths on them like uh, if you have ice mm -hmm. you could even wrap them up in a blanket of ice to try mm. to get that core body temperature down. And the only way you can really measure core body temperature mm -hmm. is with the rectal thermometer okay. but that's not usually available when people are out there so you won't be able to measure that. But you know, just do anything you can to get their temperature down. If they're if they're awake, you can start giving them water. Okay. But if they've already passed out, you just need to put cold compresses on them or put ice on their body. Now, if you're a new mom like me, you may have that type of temperature taker around. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Only a few people carry those around. Those are usually new moms. I also want to ask her about this really quick. You talk about um, these different things that you do when it's a stroke and the things that you can treat it with. A lot of people talk about giving someone an aspirin. Is that totally different? Yeah, that is totally different. Um, when we talk about giving someone an aspirin, it's uh -huh. for like uh, hemorrhagic, not hemorrhagic strokes, but strokes that where a blood clot or something has okay. gone to the brain. And then huh. we'll say if you if you give them an aspirin, you know that might prevent um, a type of blood circulation stroke. Okay, that makes um, sense. When we when we use the word heat stroke, it's not a it's not a stroke in that sense. Okay, it's just. It's just the stroke word is there because there's neurological symptoms. I see. That's good. I'm glad you made that clarification because I know a lot of people, you think stroke and you think, oh, grab an aspirin. But now you've been told if it's a heat stroke, get ice. And first of all, right. call 911. So thank right. you for that advice. Now we're going to move to Tom and ask him a question because one of the big concerns at this time of the year is definitely West Nile virus, right? Well, based on what we've seen so far and what he sees so far, we're going to ask him what the outlook looks like for West Nile this year. Tom? This year for 2014, we are expecting another active mosquito season, uh -oh. <laughs> which means basically that people need to take a lot more precautions when it comes to mosquito safety and spending time outside. Uh, we are really going to focus on outreach and teaching people uh, mosquito safety and what they can do to personally protect themselves. Okay. The biggest thing is what we try to teach people is the, what we call the four D's. Mm -hmm. uh, these are from the Center of Disease Control. And basically what it means is uh, to wear deep products, as in uh, mosquito repellents, 
Uh, there are many mosquito repellents on the market. The most uh, tested and the, the one that's going to last the longest once you apply it is something um, or is the products that contain DEET. Uh, the next one would be the way people dress. It is very, uh, it's highly recommended, recommended that you're going to have um, long sleeves and, and long pants on mm -hmm. uh, to minimize the uh, exposed skin. Uh, and also uh, wearing light col colored clothing as opposed to dark colored clothing. Dark color colored clothing is going to uh, be more attractive to mosquitoes. So light color colored clothing is very highly recommended. Also, um, if somebody's outside and they notice that they're getting bit by mosquitoes or there's mosquitoes flying around, that's a, a great indication that there is some stagnant water nearby. Uh, so we teach people to drain water, uh, which is very important to uh, take away uh, the source of where the mosquitoes are coming from. And they can do this by just walking around their house, looking at uh, their bird baths, gutters, any kind of standing water anywhere. And it could be uh, as little as, as a quarter of an inch in a coffee cup, let's say, that was left outside during a rainstorm. Hmm. Uh, mosquitoes are very resourceful. They're going to find any kind of uh, standing water uh, anywhere available for them to lay their eggs in. So if you can drain any standing water, that's going to be a big help. Also, uh, dusk and dawn it would be considered uh, the fourth D. Uh, mosquitoes are most active at uh, dusk and dawn. Uh, in the summer months, we like to be outside when it's a little bit cooler, uh, dawn and at dusk. Uh, well, mosquitoes know this, and so they're going to be actively looking for uh, easy targets, people that don't wear DEET, uh, things like that. Uh, in 2012, we had a major outbreak of West Nile uh, throughout the, the nation, really, but they considered, the CDC considered the Dallas-Fort Worth area to be the epicenter of that uh, epidemic. Um, early on in that summer, when people had West Nile, they were interviewed, 90% of people did absolutely nothing to protect themselves from getting bit by mosquitoes. Hmm. We, got, uh, we got people's attention with the media and just trying to teach the 4Ds to people. By the end of the summer, we got that number uh, down to 60% of people that were infected uh, did nothing. So we're not where we want to be yet as far as personal protection goes, but we did make a, a significant improvement. And that is, you know, our, our program really focuses on teaching people how to protect themselves. Wonderful, and that's definitely through the four D's as he's mentioned. And then I also know the city's mosquito control program is year round. So let's find out what's already been done to get us ready for the season. You guys have already been taking steps towards this, right Tom? Yeah, we have uh, what we call fixed trap locations, which are 22 locations throughout the city. We pretty much cover the entire city with our traps, um, north all the way to the south. These traps will, will catch mosquitoes in uh, and we have those mosquito pools tested and if they have a virus, we take, we take appropriate action. Now, when we say year round, we don't trap year round. What we do is we look for standing water or stagnant water. Uh, we have about 50 signs throughout the city uh, alerting people, look, if you see stagnant water, call this number, which is our hotline number. And uh, people will call in and say, hey, we have standing water. Uh, for various reasons, it could be because of rain, it could be because there's a water leak, somebody's irrigation, uh, numerous things. So we'll go out and we'll investigate it. Uh, and when we find uh, static water, we, we will treat that water. When we treat it, that li will last about um, at least 30 days. Mm -hmm. We have some products that will, that will treat that water for 180 days. Once wow. that water's treated, no mosquitoes will be able to, uh, to uh, you know, come out of that water. It will kill the mosquito larvae. And that's what we do year round. Wonderful. I'm glad you guys are taking those steps to keep us safe. It's, a, it's important. Yeah, it's very important. Now, there's another thing that's important, too, and that's protecting yourself from the summer sun. And I know that there's a lot being done to do that and a lot of different ways you can go about doing it. So let's talk to the doctor and get her advice. How can we protect our skin? So um, essentially, the best way to protect your skin is to wear um, long sleeve clothing okay. or to cover your body. Um, to try to stay cool, you want that to be light, just like he, um, Tom was saying as far as mosquito protection. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can also use sunscreen. And people who are more, are more, have a more fairer pigment, okay. they tend to have less melanin in their skin, so they're more prone to sunburn and sun injury. And so you want to try to purchase um, sunscreen lotion or sprays that is at least SPF 30 or higher. Okay. Okay. And when um, you're going to be out in the sun, you want to try to apply that to all sun exposed areas of your body mm -hmm. at least um, 20 to 15 minutes before you're out in the sun. Okay. And then you're going to want to reapply it. 
every two to three hours or so. And it, you're going to especially want to reapply it if you're sweating a lot when you're out in the sun or if you've been swimming or you've, and you've towed yourself off with the water because you'll rub off that um, sunscreen protection. And the reason why it's important to wear it is because, you know, skin that is highly exposed to the sun is more um, prone to damage and then it can lead to the increased incidence of skin cancer mm. later in life and so then that's that's dangerous and so that's why we we, we make those recommendations. Well, I'm glad you gave us that advice. I wrote down that SPF 30 or higher, because when you go buy it, there's like a million different kinds yeah. you can choose from. Does it really mm. matter how high the SPF you get? Is it just 30 or higher, is nothing else? or? No, it, just 30 or higher is what gives you the protection. And okay. then one other thing I forgot to mention, sure. the, it should have UVA and UVB, UVB protection. Okay. Important to know, when you've got a million things to choose from, we want to get the ones that are actually going to help us out. Right. So and then you. one other thing, uh -huh. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, for children and babies who are less than six months mm -hmm. of age, mm -hmm. um, sunscreen hasn't been approved to use in those age groups. Oh. So for babies, you just have to, pr you know, cover their skin or put on hats or mm -hmm. little sunglasses or something to try to, or keep them out of the sun. That's good advice. Now, if we do get sunburn, if the children get sunburned, when should you see a doctor? If, um... The sunburn, if the tissue that's red or irritated, if it doesn't start to improve and get better in a couple of days, mm -hmm. or if it starts to continue to look red and uh, the skin starts to break open and there's drainage of fluid or drainage of pus-like fluid, because that can mean there could be a secondary infection, I see. that's when you should bring them in. So it starts to look really bad, it probably is. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for that advice. You're welcome. Okay, so we're going to turn to Tom now because we've heard the message about mosquito protection before and the 4Ds, and he's reminded us of what it stands for. But we want to go over that again because it's so important, especially at this time of the year. So let's talk to Tom a bit more about that. Tom, the 4Ds, you mentioned them, and I just kind of want to go back to them okay. because we hear them time and time again that sometimes people don't really pay attention to it as much as they should. And when you talk about things like draining, and you kind of covered that for us, but let's go a little more in depth sure. because... When you talk about just a little bitty cup of something sitting around, I mean, people are putting out their flowers all the time, and those, I just bought like flower pots yesterday, and there's those little things that you put underneath to hold the water mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm. Well, should we not do things like that? Is it simple stuff like that that we should totally avoid? You know, everybody's going to have to make that call for themselves. I see. But I would say, yes, I would avoid that. Okay. Uh, now, if, if you're filling, your, you're watering your plant, and you have that much excess water, you're probably watering too much anyway. Okay. Uh, if it, it doesn't do the plant any good if the water's just sitting in the, the bottom of a reservoir somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, the, uh, it is very important. It doesn't take a lot. And we've been experiencing drought conditions for a while here in North Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, mosquitoes will get desperate. So the smallest amount of water is something that you're not going to think is that you may not think is that significant. A mosquito is, may have no choice but to lay its eggs there. So mm -hmm. it's important to try to get rid of as much water as we, we possibly can. Okay, and so I know I'm giving you a hard time here, but these are <laughs> questions you guys know you want answered, Definitely. so I'm going to just ask them for you. In addition to that, which I'm, by the way, going to get a refund for those little things that I bought for going to my plants now, so thank you, uh, Tom. But I also want to talk to you about dress, because I love to work out outside, and I know a lot of other people do too. I see you out there jogging, riding your bikes, and we've got to exercise, but you're saying we need to wear long sleeves in the summer sun to protect ourselves from mosquitoes. Is that right, Tom? That's correct. Uh, Growing up in America, we aren't used to the fact that mosquitoes are very dangerous. It's only until recently that we're starting to see. So it's a new fact of life. We have to be aware of this the situation that is, is really a new thing, like I said. Uh, we also need to keep in mind that mosquitoes are responsible for more deaths worldwide than anything else, uh, as far as human beings are concerned. Uh, that's been a privilege that we haven't had to deal with for a long time in this country. Uh, but now it, the things are changing. We have West Nile and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So we have to be very aware of this fact and I would, you have to keep in mind, yes, uh, heat stroke is important, but uh, not getting bit is important too. Yeah. You don't want West Nile. You just have to take my word for it. If you ever meet somebody that has West Nile, you understand how serious the situation it can be. Uh, it's life changing, young and old, it doesn't matter. Uh, being a little bit more hotter, maybe not getting the, that tan you want if you're out you know, at dawn, at dawn and dusk, uh, it's real worth not getting infected. Makes so there sense. is no treatment, there is no cure for West Nile. 
Yeah, and maybe you lose weight faster when you wear the long sleeve clothes, right? <laughs> when you're out jogging, at least that's what I'm going with. But uh, seriously, Tom, I, I want to go back and talk just a little bit more about these. Obviously, you mentioned the dusk and dawn, and you said the mosquitoes are out there at dusk and dawn because that's when we're out there, and that makes perfectly good sense. But the DEET-based repellent's important. I, I had the doctor kind of elaborate a bit about how to protect our skin and which of the protections we should get, the SPF, 30 or higher, I wrote it down so I can make sure I buy the right ones for myself and my family. But we want to make sure we're getting the right DEET protectant too because we're seeing more and more of that on the shelves. But are we getting the right kind? Let's find out. So what should we look for? Any product that contains DEET is going to be effective. Okay. It's better than no DEET at all. Gotcha. Now when you look at certain products, you're going to see 15%, 1.5%, 30% DEET. All that means is the higher DEET content, the longer it's going to last. Uh, follow uh, with any product you have to follow uh, the directions on the label uh, they're all going to be different and there are like I said there are other products that don't contain DEET uh, but each individual has to look into it themselves we recommend DEET that's because it's been it's been around the longest and it's been the most tested uh, by the CDC so that's what the CDC recommends and that's what we are, we recommend mm -hmm. there are many different products that contain DEET uh, Currently, we use uh, Deep Woods Off, which is the highest um, rated DEET product, but uh, having that's not the best thing to take around a, a can of spray. There's new products coming out that are basically wet napkins that you can keep in your pocket, mm. and it's very easy to apply. You don't have to worry about aerosoling. Uh, you don't have to worry about leaving it in your car on a 100-degree day and that uh, can becoming uh, volatile and exploding possibly inside your car. So they're, you know, they're, we're making strides, but do something. You must do something to, yeah. to not get bit. It's really important. You've convinced us and that's good. One more thing though before I let you get off of this subject of the 4Ds. Is there anything around our yards that we should be concerned about that we should look for? Maybe something hidden that we hadn't thought of. I talked about the plants and the pots but sure. what else? Well gutters. You don't really get to see what's in your gutter ah, sometimes. It's important yeah. to go and clean your gutter out at least once a year. Of course be very safe. Uh, things that mm -hmm. I've seen in my yard uh, for instance uh, I left a tarp out one day just a blue tarp that covers my lawnmower and it had rained. I went out there and, you know, the little little pockets that held water in those tarps. Uh, it could be anything. Uh, you have to kind of, each yard's different. Some yards are cleaner than others, but uh, tires are a big thing. There is no way that a tire, you can't even empty a tire, don't have them around. Uh, the way the tire is shaped, if there's water in it, it's very difficult to get that water out. Uh, so we have code enforcement that uh, we work really closely with. So if we see tires or somebody, uh, somebody calls in and says, hey, my neighbor's got tires, uh, that's a big one. Also, probably the biggest concern of ours is also swimming pools. People not taking care of the swimming pools, people with vacant homes. Uh, if there's nobody there to, to check on things in a vacant home, call us. We'll come out and we'll do it. We'll, take, we'll inspect it. We'll treat the area if we need to. Because uh, you can do everything you can possibly do to your own yard, but if your neighbor, it doesn't, if nobody lives there, somebody has to take care of that. Because it could sense. be not just a problem for you, but the entire block, really. Makes sense. So we got it. We're going to remember the four Ds. And I'm glad you mentioned the pools and you also uh, talked about water standing there because that's something else we're going to switch and talk about now. And we're going to talk to Dr. Thompson about this because I know a lot of us try to beat the heat by cooling off in the water. So we need to find out what we need to be aware of if we're going swimming, whether that's in a lake or in a pool. So let's find out now. What should we be aware of when we're heading out to cool off? Well, um, just like with anything else, sometimes uh, even in recreational pools and in lakes, there could be certain types of organisms mm. that are present in the water that if you ingest or even if it gets on your skin, it can lead to a really bad illness or infection and that can be life threatening. So um, as far as pool safety, mm -hmm. um, usually there's standards that community pools have to meet as far as the pH and whatnot to to have the chlorine level set to kill off most things. Um, and so hopefully that's being done and that's being watched by someone. So. Um, but what you can do for, your, for yourself and for your family is um, before you get in the pool, take uh, a shower oh. with soap um, and then once you're at the pool when you try to encourage your children not to drink the water okay because okay? a lot of kids my kids included especially my daughter <laughs> uh, <laughs> likes the taste of the salty water uh -huh. so try to encourage them not to do that and then um, if your children are wearing diapers yeah. um, you want to check the diaper every 30 minutes make sure that it hasn't been soiled with stool um, and then uh, 
when you're at the pool, try not to change the diaper by the pool because if waste products like urine and stool get mm -hmm. in, the, in the pool or even in, in the lake, that's when those organisms can overgrow and that's when you can get sick. Wow, so, so you want to try. A lot of stuff to think about, uh -huh. right? Um, the other thing uh, you can do is uh, wash your hands, okay. you know, as frequently as you can before you start eating after you've been in the pool water. Well, and that will try to help minimize some of that. Good the spread of the of Thank the you. Some things I hadn't even thought about before, like taking a shower before getting in the mm -hmm. pool. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to switch and go back to you now, Tom. I know I let you go with the four Ds a little bit, but I want to talk to you about mosquitoes because I know the city traps are being set to collect mosquitoes. So I want to find out about the goals of those traps, obviously to get as many mosquitoes caught as possible, maybe more. Tell us. Well, the idea when we set traps is not to minimize the number of mosquitoes. A lot of people oh, think man. that. And <laughs> what we're trying to do is gather, um, we're trying to gather information. What type of mosquitoes are prevalent at a certain time or a certain place? Hmm. Also, are, are there diseases associated with those mosquitoes that we caught? If there are, then we, we initiate our spraying. Uh, we would, if we catch a, a, a mosquito, let's say with West Nile in a certain area or any other disease, we'll go and spray that area down three, three times on three separate nights. Uh, that is a CDC recommendation. So in that aspect, we haven't caught a lot of mosquitoes as of this as of yet this year. Uh, 2013, we actually caught a little bit more mosquitoes than we did in 2012. But in 2012, we had a lot more uh, higher uh, chances of having a mosquito with West Nile. And the good thing is we've taken a lot of effort and we've, you know, with outreach to the public, uh, with our Irving Fights the Bite website, which have a lot of really helpful information on there. Uh, people have gotten a lot better about mosquito safety. So in 2013, we had no cases of West Nile in the city of Irving, which is a very positive thing. Mm -hmm. We hope that continues, but we still have to remain just as vigilant as we were at the end of 2012 and, and into 2013 uh, for this year and into the future. Wonderful, and we do have the website there on the screen so people can see where to go to to get more information yeah. because I'm sure there are people saying, well, hey, how do we know where they're going to be spraying, when they're sure. going to be spraying? And then the next question, you mentioned something about safety. A lot of people are wondering, is it safe? Should we keep our pets out when they're spraying? Everything that we use is uh, approved uh, by the state and at the federal level. We spray for mosquitoes in the city of Irving at night. So that helps to target specifically uh, mosquitoes when we spray. So the bumblebees are in their nest at night. You don't see bees flying around at night. Uh, it only affects insects. We would advise people to take precautions. That's why this year, for the first time, we're going to implement um, Twitter and Facebook to let people know, hey, we're going to spray uh, tonight in this zip code or this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And also on our Irving Fights the Bite website, there's a spraying schedule that will show a map and a location of where uh, we might have found West Nile or a reason to spray that area. And I was going to say, how are the locations decided? Can someone call you and say, hey, I'm concerned about my yard or my neighborhood? Absolutely. That's a great question. We have uh, what we call on-demand traps. In addition to the uh, minimal 13 traps we already set every week, a resident can call us and ask, hey, can I have a problem with mosquitoes in my backyard. Can you set a trap and find out what's going on? We'll be happy to do that. That's why we're here. When we set those traps, we will take those traps uh, and we will actually test those in particular residential traps in Irving. We have a lab uh, set up uh, as of last year. Last year we did 66 residential traps. I believe it was just one of them that tested positive for West Nile and which initiated spraying. Interesting. Okay, very, very interesting. I'm glad you've given us that information. And we also had the telephone number to call if people are watching now and saying, I want them to come check out our area. Sure. And in case you missed it, it's 972-721-3755. Now we've talked about heat stroke and we've talked about the concerns at the pools and we've talked about the 40s and all that. But now I want to talk to the doctor about some other things, other injuries that we need to be on the watch for during the summer months. What else happens during the summer that we need to be aware of? Um, well, usually because the weather is nicer, mm -hmm. people are outside more and children are out riding their bikes. And so um, when, and, and not just children, adults too. And so um, when you're on your bike and if you fall, there's a tendency to sometimes hit, hit your head. And so we want to really encourage people to wear helmets, mm. um, especially, especially kids because that's one of the leading causes of severe injury is, is, is head injuries in children. And so, and sometimes it's hard to get kids to want to wear their helmet because right. they don't 
they don't like it, but they have all these new stylish things. They're, cute, They're yeah. very <laughs> cute. My daughter has a little kitty cat one, you yeah. know, that we picked up. And so we have ladybugs. <laughs> <laughs> just encourage them to do that. So basically, that's the biggest thing for the summer is wearing safety equipment. And, and you also need to wear the helmets when you're rollerblading, skateboarding, all, of all it. that stuff. Yeah, and it's also important that adults wear them, just saying parents, yeah, so that they'll want to wear them too. And teens, you got big brothers and sisters, you need to wear them so the little brothers and sisters will want right, to wear them, Because right? we're role models, that's exactly. right. Exactly. And something else I know that we need to talk about quickly is for um, summer months, a lot of people are going out on picnics, whether it's right. a romantic thing or out with the kids. Food is a concern. Does it does it come up to be a problem as far as the temperature of food, food safety during the summer months? Well, yes, it can. Um, so essentially, you always want if you're going to be out, you know, on a picnic or just cooking out at home with your family, mm -hmm. you want to wash all the vegetables and fruit, obviously, before you eat them. But most of us know to do that. But the other thing that you can do to try to prevent contamination of the food is when you purchase it, try to keep it separated as far as the meats, you know, keep away from the veggies and the fruits in your mm. basket. And then when you're preparing the food at home, maybe use two different cutting boards. For veggies and fruits, you have this particular cutting board. And mm. for, for your meats, you have this other one. And then after using all of that, you wash it with soap and water. But uh, during the warm summer months, you really shouldn't leave food out longer than an hour before you chill it. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Good so advice. So leaving it out for hours at a time is not, not good. It's not good. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for that information. And I know we're almost out of time, but I have to have Tom tell us what kind of uh, outreach the city not only did to spray about the mosquitoes. We found out about that, but I want to find out from him some of the other kinds of things that are causing concerns. Um, I know the city's done a lot to spread the word about the mosquito-borne illnesses, but there's other things we need to watch for. There are other mosquito-borne illnesses besides yeah, what's Nile, right? Yeah, there's things like St. Louis encephalitis, dengue fever. Uh, there's one in the Caribbean that's spreading really quickly. It's called chikungunya virus. Uh, the state health officials have already found a human case from somebody traveling into the country with chikungunya. But it doesn't sound good. Yeah, chikungunya? Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not considered deadly, okay. but painful. Oh, and wow. but people typically will get over it, hmm. uh, but it's not something you want to you want to really have to deal with. But um, I think the biggest thing is the standing water and the deep protection. So I just want to finish with that. All the rec centers in Irving and even at City Hall, mm -hmm. if you're an Irving resident, you can pick up uh, free dunks, which is pe what people can at home uh, hmm. treat standing water. And also they can get a deep product, either uh, a can of off or like I mentioned before, one of those uh, napkins that have deep in it. Good advice. And, and Doctor, um, in the short time we have left, I want you to be able to tell us a little bit about your clinic. Oh, okay. So yeah, um, I work for the Urban Community Clinic. It's off of 1302 Lane Street. It's right across the street from uh, the Baylor Hospital okay. there. And we take all comers, you know, as long as you're a resident in Irving. Um, we're willing to take you on as a patient there. Even if you don't have insurance, you may qualify for some of our charity um, programs um, to get your health care there, to and try to keep you out of the hospital. You know, mm -hmm. the goal is to try to prevent you from, you know, getting so sick that you require, you know, serious intervention later. And it's for people of all ages? People of all ages. And is it like a family doctor? You treat everything? Yes, we, tr I treat, we treat everything. And except, you know, pregnancy. But w once you get pregnant, we refer you to the appropriate OBGYN's office Wonderful. for you to well, to hopefully no one has any there. problem with West Nile and needs to come see you <laughs> or has any problem around the pool or the picnic table because you guys have totally well prepared us uh, to avoid those things this summer. We want to remember the four Ds, right, Tom? Most definitely. Yeah, and the 4Ds cross over to other protection, as you mentioned, as mm -hmm. far as avoiding the heat stroke with things. It's all important all together. Right. Wear all long together. sleeve, protect yourselves from the sun for that sun protection. So we thank you for sharing the advice, the tips. It's been really great having you both on the show. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. And thank you for watching. I'm Starlene Stringer. Please be sure to join us on Thursday, June 5th, for our next edition of Open Line. We'll update you on some of the biggest construction projects in the city of Irving. And if you have questions, you can email them at ICT at cityofirving.org and we'll get them answered for you on the next edition of Open Line. We'll see you then.